The next drawing tool is 3D Sketch. Its panel is similar to the previous freehand tool. But if you draw a spline with the previous tool, it fills with a polygon and is squeezed to a certain height. Then the 3D Sketch panel has a larger range of actions. Let's look at the toolbar and its features in more detail. Freehand is also divided into several logical parts. Tools, custom tool settings, spline creation modes, drop down tab with 3D Sketch customization panels, and custom modes for the selected drop down tab mode. The first line tool allows you to create a polyline. Select this tool to move the mouse cursor to the plane you are working with. Left click on the workspace and move the mouse cursor to the side. The path of the created line is followed by the mouse cursor. To place the anchor point, once again, click the mouse in the workspace. To complete the drawing, connect the first and last points. This requires three or more anchor points. A closed form is created, or press escape to create drawing lines. Let's look at the settings of this tool. Number of edges allows you to create an additional number of anchor points in a single segment. Let's create two lines. The first line is number of edges, one, and the second line is 10. The next one is symmetry setting. It allows you to create a mirrored image of an object on the work plane along one of the coordinate axis. The next tool, Spline, allows you to create curved lines with a smooth angle anchor points. Let's look at the settings of this tool. Smoothness lets you choose the level of the smoothness of the spline angles. Symmetry allows you to create a mirrored image of a workspace object along one of the coordinate axes. The next group of tools is to create an arch. Each of them has a different technique of creation. Let's choose the first one. Move the mouse cursor to the workspace. Put the first point. Move the mouse cursor to the side and set the second point. As you can see, an arc will be created from the first point you set to the same distance drawn for the first line. Select the second tool from the group, Arc. Set the first point and the second. The arc will be created from the drawn line, depending on where you take the mouse cursor. And the last type of arch allows you to create it depending on where you move the mouse cursor after the second point. Text. You can enter the text you want in the input column to display it with this tool. The next text tool allows you to add text on the workspace. Let's look at its settings. Smoothness allows you to set the level of smoothness of the spline angles. Font. From a drop-down tab, you can choose one of the offered fonts.
text. You can enter the text you want in the input column to display it with this tool. Enable Symmetry lets you create a mirrored image of a workspace object on one of the coordinate axes. The Circle tool on the workspace lets you create a symmetrical circle. Let's review its settings. Number of edges allows you to add or subtract the number of anchor points of the created spline. Symmetry lets you create a mirrored image of a workspace object on one of the coordinate axes. The next tool is Rectangle. It allows you to create a rectangle. The number of edges allows you to add the number of anchor points in one segment. Create a mirrored image of a workspace object on one of the coordinate axes. The next tool is the lips allows you to create the object ellipse on the workspace. The number of edges allows you to add or subtract the number of anchor points of the object. Symmetry lets you create a mirrored image of a workspace object on one of the coordinate axes. The last tool is Donut, allows you to create a spline with a double ellipse in the middle. In its setting, number of edges, you can add the number of anchor points on the segment spline. Symmetry lets you create a mirrored image of a workspace object on one of the coordinate axes. The next one in the 3D sketch panel is the mode of creating lines. The main difference between this tool is that you can draw not only in the workspace, but also on objects, which extends the range of actions. When in planes mode, you can draw both on the workspace and on previously created objects. Just select it with the mouse cursor and the selected drawing plane will be highlighted. In the mode of creating lines, the object creating lines in the plane is blocked and only creating lines of the object is allowed. The next one in the panel 3D sketch is the drop down tab with extended settings of this tool. Plane settings allows you to set the workspace. In its settings, in the first drop down tab, you can choose one of the workspaces and turn it on or off by clicking on the required checkbox. The workspaces you have added would be displayed above on the panel, bottom, top, back, front, left, right. Offset allows you to move the workspace along one of the coordinate axes, bottom, top, back, front, left, right. You can move one of the selected planes to a certain numerical value, or move the workspace manually by selecting the anchoring tool and clicking the mouse on the next plane.
Rotate sliders allows you to rotate the work plane along one of the coordinate axes. Save allows you to save the selected workspace and another workspace will appear in the drop-down tab of the one you have created before deformation. The following in the Advanced Settings tab is Profile Settings. It allows you to select and interact with a spline. When we create a line, it will appear in the drop-down tab. To create a new line, click Create New Profile. Selection from the previous spline is removed. And it becomes possible to create a new spline without leaving the 3D Sketch toolbar. Created spline will be displayed in a drop-down tab where you can manage them by the number in the order they are created in the document itself. There are two options for managing profiles. The first is in the toolbar of the tool itself. The second is in the object panel by removing or adding selection to the desired profile. The latest precision settings lets you fine tune the spline creation values. Snap to. In the drop down tab, you can choose one of the types of bindings. Active profile allows you to snap the mouse cursor to the active profile points. The next type of binding is All Profile. It allows you to snap the mouse cursor to all profiles created in the workspace. The next type of binding is Object Snaps. Move the mouse cursor to the anchor points of all seen objects. Grid vertices allows you to snap the mouse cursor to the intersection of the working plane. And the last type of binding is guides. It allows you to snap the mouse cursor to the previously created guides on the workspace. The guides are in the tab Utilities. We will look at them in the next lessons. Minimum Step Size allows you to choose a minimum size of the created line in millimeters. Check the checkbox. After activating Minimum Step Size, Override Step Size appears, which allows you to ignore the value of binding Minimum Angle Step allows you to choose the minimal angle of created lines. Check the checkbox and enter a certain value in degrees.
Hide all objects allows you to hide or show all other seen objects. Show measurements allows you to hide or show the additional settings menu of length and angle of lines. This window doesn't need confirmation. All the splines you have created before have already been added to the scene. You just have to close the panel, which will not cancel the action of the created spline.